The main thing differentiating disorder eating from an eating disorder is the level of severity and the frequency of behaviors. It's all about degree. So those who engage in disordered eating will likely have similar behaviors to a full-blown eating disorder, but at a lesser frequency or a lower level of severity. It's still to be taken seriously, though the symptoms might not be as extreme, since those individuals may be at a higher risk for developing a diagnosable eating disorder, are more likely to experience anxiety and depression, and are still susceptible to medical consequences. When considering if disordered eating is impairing functioning, we look at whether thoughts about food, body, and exercise impact one's concentration or focus, if socializing or routines are impacted due to exercise or food rules, if food consumption or restriction is used as a way to cope with stressors, and how much discomfort thoughts of food and body cause. The best known contributor to the development of an eating disorder is body dissatisfaction and self-esteem being rooted in body shape, weight, and size. Even if someone doesn't meet the full criteria for the four diagnosable eating disorders, they may still not be maintaining a healthy relationship with food or their bodies.